I hear you're interested in certified seed potato production. Yes, my cousin told me that since she began using certified seed potato, her yields have more than doubled. Now I want to start multiplying certified seed potato for farmers in my community. Yes, indeed. Certified seed potatoes can make a huge difference in yields, but it involves much more work than when producing rare potatoes. Okay, what, what are the requirements for one to be a certified seed producer? Well, your first step is to register with the National Agricultural Seed Council, the NASC, as a seed producer. You can register as a sole seed company if you meet the requirements or as cooperatives to become community seed producers. To qualify, you'll need a minimum land holding of two hectares and a crop rotation plan for the next three years. You'll also need a seed potato storage unit. A seed producer whose field is eligible for certification should notify the NASC prior to harvest and work out a satisfactory plan for maintaining the identity of the potatoes through harvest to storage. A lot is eligible for certification levels only when this identity is maintained. This is good to know. So speaking about different potato varieties, where can I source the certified seed from? You will need to purchase breeder, foundation or certified seed from a certified seed producer and make sure the bag is well sealed and has a certification label from the National Agricultural Seed Council. The ideal time to plant the seed potato is when seed dormancy is broken. And what is seed dormancy? You'll know that potatoes are out of dormancy when their eyes are open and have small sprouts. Ah, I see. So just like us, potatoes too need to be awake and active then. So true. A potato still in dormancy will not grow even under favorable conditions. And where is the ideal place to plant certified seed potatoes? Well, it's best to plant at elevations that are between 2,000 to 3,000 meters above sea level. Lower elevations pose problems with pests and diseases, particularly aphids and bacterial wilt. Ah, yes. I've seen so many aphids and bacterial wilt problems at lower elevations. Exactly. Speaking of pests and diseases, be sure to plant your seed at least 50 meters away from commercial wear potato or other salinaceous crops such as eggplant, okra and chilies to reduce the chances of spreading from one field to another. This is known as isolation distance. I've heard that crop rotation is also important. Yes, it is. As I had told you, for certification, you are required to have a three-year crop rotation plan. You need to have enough land to rotate crops for at least four to five seasons with cereals such as wheat, barley, maize, and legumes such as beans and peas. You can also rotate with brassicas such as cabbage, kale, canola, and cauliflower. And how does this help? This helps to avoid pests and diseases accumulating in the soil. It also improves the soil health and fertility. Um, is there anything else I should consider about the soil? Yes, additional soil tests for bacterial wilt and potato cyst nematodes may be required depending on the environmental conditions and nature of potatoes. We also recommend soil analysis for pH and nutrient status. This will help you to select the right fertilizer type for your seed potato production. Okay, so why is it so important to know the pH of your soils? Good question. The pH of the soil impacts the availability of certain nutrients to the plant. Seed potatoes require soils with a pH of 5.5 to 7.0. Mm, and what if my soil has a different pH than that? Well, you can use lime or acidic fertilizers to adjust extreme soil pH. Liming will increase the pH, but we advise applying it to the previous crop before planting the potato to reduce the common scab infection. Um, okay, so should I plant my seed potatoes the same way I plant wear potatoes? Nah, no, it's different. A seed potato crop should be separated from neighboring wear potato or other salinaceous plants. For instance, breeders, pre-basic and basic seed must have a minimum isolation distance of 100 meters, while commercial certified seed must have 50 meters. Okay, so what if I am planting different varieties? Separate seed potato of the same class or different variety from neighboring seed potato crops by at least 5 meters for basic seed and at least 2 meters for commercial certified seed. Can you please demonstrate to me the best way to plant seed potato? Um, depending on the size of your tubers, space them between 20 to 30 centimeters apart. Row distancing should be between 60 to 75 centimeters, depending on the variety. Place well-sprouted tubers and furrows 10 to 15 centimeters deep and cover them with soil. It sounds like I need to plant a lot more potatoes for seed than I do for wear potatoes. Very true. Seed potato production requires 2.5 to 3 tons per hectare, 
while where potato requires 2 to 2.5 tons per hectare. But won't planting them close together affect their growth? Remember, with seed potato production, you're aiming for small and medium-sized tubers. A higher density of potato plant results in more stems and a higher number of small and medium-sized tubers. Mm. And at what stage of the crop's growth do I need to involve National Agricultural Seed Council? Application for seed inspection by the National Agricultural Seed Council should be made immediately after planting. Two field inspections are required. The first inspection happens during the flowering stage. For non-flowering varieties, this inspection would take place at the canopy cover stage of the plant. The second inspection takes place just before dehoming, while the plants are still green. Tubers will also be sampled for latent bacterial wilt infection at this time. It is your responsibility to schedule the inspections with the National Agricultural Seed Council, NASC. Okay. I practice healing, weeding, and dehoming um, on my rare potatoes. Should I do the same with seed potato? Yes. All recommended crop management practices are the same for wear and seed potato crops. How often should I check for pests and diseases? This should be done at least once a week. Remove any infected plants immediately and dispose of them safely either by burying or burning them far from your crop. Fills will be rejected when seriously infected by diseases or are damaged by late blight, insects, drought, wind, hail, or frost, as well as other causes which interfere with proper inspection of seed potato. And are there other reasons a field might be rejected? Yes, poor stands of the crop in the field, low soil fertility, or excessive weed infestation will also render the candidate seed field ineligible for certification. Seed potato fields presented for inspection, which may have symptoms of a disease that might be new in the country, will be disqualified or may have certification postponed pending further investigation. I've heard that dehoming helps keep your seed potato healthy. Absolutely. Dehoming not only prevents bruising and improves storability, it also reduces late season virus transmission. Okay, so when should I dehome? Dehoming dates depend on seed tuber size and prevailing aphid pressure. The inspector may advise the grower on the appropriate date to dehome the seed crop after approval. Before dehoming, 400 medium-sized tubers per hectare shall be taken from 400 symptomless plants in a seed potato crop for latent bacterial wilt testing. If a seed potato crop is on less than half a hectare, then samples will be taken from 1% of the estimated plant population. Any special considerations for harvest time? It's best to harvest on sunny days to help the tubers to harden and dry quickly. This makes it easier to remove excess soil from the skin and deduces the risk of rot. What about sorting and grading? Sort your tubers by size, separating the ones that are 30 to 45 mm from the ones that are 45 to 60 mm. Remove any disease-infected tubers and destroy them. And what about storage? A seed lot eligible for certification in storage must be clearly distinguished from other seed lots and stored separately. Empty containers, walls, and wood that may prevent mixing are acceptable for separating the lots. Approved seed potato packaging should have an attached National Agricultural Seed Council seed codex tag to provide farmers with quality assurance through tracking, traceability, and provision of quality seeds. The seed inspector inspects seed to ensure they meet the National Agricultural Seed Council guidelines on specified seed size, tuber free from diseases and defects, acceptable physiological condition, and are free of contamination. Once the inspector confirms all the requirements are met, National Agricultural Seed Council Seed Codex tag will be issued for each bag after which it can be sold as certified seed. Don't forget that you will need to replace your seed potato every two years to ensure the quality that will keep you certified. Thank you. I think I'm now ready to get started in seed potato multiplication. Mm -hmm. All the best. If you do it right, next season, the farmers who use your seed potato will be telling everyone about how they've more than doubled their harvests.